Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis, uh, another 40k tactics video for you today talking again about the Death Star unit. Uh, this video is about the Necron Death Stars, the Wraith Wing and the Royal Court Disco Inferno. <laughs> um, I touched upon both of these very very briefly when I analysed the Necron Codex and I'm going to talk about them in a bit more detail here. The Wraith Star is simply a six-man squad of canoptic wraiths with possible upgrades like whip coils, led by Destroyer Lord with Mind Shackle Scarabs, Res Orb, War Scythe, possibly Sempaternal Weave. Um, usually running two of these squads in a typical competitive Death Star Necron army, supported by Annihilation Barges and by MSU Night Scythe Warriors. Uh, the list is very effective because cannot take wraiths, as if you saw my videos you'll know, have a 3 plus invulnerable save, 2 wounds, strength 6 rending attacks, with the destroyer lord they gain preferred enemy, whip coils can reduce the initiative of their opponents, uh, they are fast due to being jump infantry, so they can re-roll their charge distances and they gain the hammer of wrath special rule. Uh, what makes the Destroyer Lord such a potent investment, because Wraiths are powerful enough, what makes the Destroyer Lord so potent is the fact that he has a War Scythe, he has Mind Shackle Scarab, so he can lock down characters, he has a tougher armor save, he has three wounds compared to the one that a Wraith has, and he has a Res Orb, which can get him up. I should point out that Wraiths do not get reanimation protocols, therefore the Res Orb only affects the Destroyer Lord, not the Wraiths. That's very important, because otherwise it would be too broken. Uh, this squad is simply used to hide behind cover on turn 1, then move and move and make an assault. You can be quite... you don't have to be brave with wraiths, you can jump them from cover to cover to cover. Because they will be targeted and shot at, because they are quite expensive and despite all the concerns, they're not the hardest to put down, because toughness 4, so they can be put down quite easily, but a destroyer lord at toughness 6 can help and a 2 plus armor save can certainly help to tank those wounds. Actually, I don't think the toughness 6 applies because of majority toughness rolls when rolling to wound. Um, when this race star gets into melee, it can rip through just about anything because a war scythe can kill anything, strength 7, AP 1, armor bane, uh, rending attacks from everything else, preferred enemy for re-rolling ones when hitting and wounding, so it's really good at killing just about anything. It may not do it quickly, but it will break just about anything short of another Death Star. Um, usually they run two to double the threat, and because a single Wraith Star can be targeted and killed, two Wraith Stars can't really. So that's why two are run rather than one, because you can fit a double Death Star in here. Uh, so always bear in mind that a Death Star won't win the game on its own. Particularly not this one. This one requires flyer support. This run requires Annihilation Barges. That's all it really needs. MSU Warriors in Night Sights and Annihilation Barges and possibly Immortals can win a game. Um, don't think, though, when you're facing the Wraith Star that you have to target the Wraith Star. It will come and it will kill a unit if it gets to melee. Maybe two. But it's not as hard as everyone makes out to ignore it. As long as you kill the Annihilation Barges, they can't shoot back. If, you, if you've got something anti-flyer, kill the flyers, it can't shoot you. And then you've got the will of the board, because wraiths are not troops, so they're forced to jump around and kill all the other troops, meaning that you've got the liberty to kill them with your heavy weapons. Uh, the other Death Star in the Necron army is a lot rarer, a lot more expensive, and maybe not as powerful, but it's a lot, lot more fun. It's the Royal Court Disco Inferno. This is quite simply you take an Overlord or a named character like Traz in the Infinite or Imhotep the Stormlord, any named character who can unlock a royal court, basically. And then you take that royal court and you fill it with Necron Lords, Necron Cryptex, and then you spam out the upgrades. Uh, you then keep them as one unit instead of splitting them up, and you let loose. Um, commonly, you will pick a character who is powerful. You can even ch choose an Overlord with Phase Shifter, War Scythe, Mind Shackle Scarabs, whatever else takes your fancy, really. Um, and then with your lords, you take mind shackle scarabs, you usually take war scythes, um, and that's all you really have to take. You may take a res orb as well, just in case. And from there, you go onto the cryptex and you pick the disciplines that suit you. Um, always take a veil of darkness though, because 
this is only an infantry unit and it's not very mobile. So make sure that you can keep moving and the best way to do that is via a Veil of Darkness. Uh, if you have Vargard Obi-Ron in here, you can make this even more powerful because you give them a second Veil, basically. Which is great for a second chance to teleport, I believe. Um, so be very careful when facing this because a crypt tech unit can shoot like heck. As you may have seen in my Necron Analysis, uh, Eldritch Lances, Voltaic Staffs are all very powerful weapons. So vehicles are in big trouble against them because of the haywire, the high strength and low leadership as well So because of the Abyssal Staff and Mind Jackal if you get into melee. There's no real way to handle an RCDI as it's known. The best advice I've got is keep it out of 24 inches really because once it gets into 24 inches it can start firing all its guns and it can just start being a bigger pain. Um, vehicles may as well leave it completely alone because war sites, Voltaic staffs, Eldritch lances, all sorts of things in there can kill vehicles. Uh, if you're going to engage in melee, make sure you try and kill the lords. If you're going to engage it in a shooting war, kill the cryptex. I know this isn't easy, but there's no, there will be a few ablative wounds in there, and they will probably be majority toughness five, due to um, the um, what's his name HQ being there, being toughness five, and that will make it more. So try and whittle down the lords if you can, because that brings the majority toughness down to four, and you've got more chance of killing them. Um, I think, as, an, uh, as a former Necron player, Illuminor Caesaras might have a purpose here. No, wait, he only upgrades warriors anymore, so sorry, that's a uh, void point, my mistake. Um, so, be wary of what it can do, because obviously it, can, it can't win a shooting war, because it's only got two or three guns. Um, but in a melee war, the amount of mind shackle, the amount of war sites, possibly tesseract labyrinths thrown in there... Are just going to be nightmarish to kill. Um, you're going to really struggle to kill it in melee. So keep it away from you and drop templates on it. Anything AP3 is murder to that squad because nothing in there, save the odd Sempaternal Weave, will have a 2 plus armor save. Therefore, the AP3 is killing everything it hits on 2s. Small arms can work, but they are going to be toughness 5 for a bit and will have 3 plus armor saves if it's cleverly deployed. Because people want to keep the cryptex alive so as they can unleash their wizardry tricks. Uh, the RCDI can be done quite on the cheap because, I mean, a lord with a war site is 45 points and cryptex with staff of lights are only 25. Beyond that, you can then get very expensive and start throwing upgrades at them. But, and if you do choose to play it cheap, you can run two, but. You're going to need to be playing minimum probably two, three thousand points to get this to work. And it is a little bit of a bad idea, if you ask me. Um, in terms of what the RCDI won't do, it won't help the rest of your army very much. It's very much a Death Star in itself. It won't do much for the rest of the force. For example, you may pick to take uh, Zandrek, but his rule giving and rule taking will only apply majority to the unit the Death Star is close to or the Death Star itself and things like um, Imhotek's Lord of the Storm rule will be just as good for shielding the Death Star from the firepower as they to get close um, again you still need to back this up with fire support so annihilation barges, possibly a Catan because a Catan is a great way for the Royal Court to have a great counter assault unit You'll obviously need troops, and then you'll need possibly a flyer. I don't think you can embark a royal court in a flyer. If you could, it would be scary as heck, I must say. Uh, it's up to you, really. Um, so, yeah, that's the two Decron Death Stars, the Wraith Star and the RCDI. Um, more commonly, you'll see the Wraith Star, so make sure you can bring that down, but also focus on the support elements. Annihilation barges are so cheap and so powerful that they need destroying quickly. I used to hate... Well, I used to love playing with an Annihilation Barge, and I used to hate playing against it. I still do, because it can rip holes in just about anything it shoots at because of its high strength and high number of shots from Tesla. So, kill the Annihilation Barges if you can, then whittle down the star. Um, if there are flyers, of course, try and get rid of those as you do. Use your own flyers, use anti-flyer guns, whatever takes your fancy, really. 
Uh, in terms of the Real Royal Court Disco Inferno, you'll only really see this in fun games where the opponent's having a laugh, but it can be seriously powerful, so you do need to focus it, kill it. Kill the Lords particularly first because of the toughness thing, and it reduces the risk in melee, at which point you can engage and bring the Cryptex down. Uh, that's all for today. If you have any opinions, leave them in the comment section. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Um, I asked in the description of my last video what your favourite Death Stars are, whether you have a particular favourite or a particular nemesis that you hate playing and perhaps want me to take a look at. I know there are a couple more I can do. I know I can talk about possibly the Farsight Bomb for Tau. Um, and I think there is a mini star involving Guard and Dark Angels. Uh, that all then for now uh, let me know what your Death Star favourites are leave a like uh, thank you for watching my name is Michael and I will see you again